uh, welcome to this series of uh, Meet the Artist events that uh, we are doing linked to an exhibition called The Fine Hand Show, 34 artworks invented in Berlin and made in Siberia, curated by Thibaut de Reuter and opening on the 17th of June in the Museum Center Plosch at Mira. Uh, my name is Per Brandt. I'm the director of the Goethe Institute in Novosibirsk. The Goethe Institute is Germany's cultural institute active worldwide with uh, 157 institutes, three of them in Russia, one of them in Siberia. Um, the show is part of the Kasnoyarsk Museums uh, Biennial, um, which is the oldest biennial uh, there is in Russia, founded in 1995 um, at the Museum Center, Plush at Mira. Um, it is also one of the largest events uh, dedicated to contemporary art uh, east of the Ural um, Mountains. And this 14th edition of the Kasnoyarsk um, Museum Biennial is dedicated to the topic mirror neurons and will be shown from 17th of June till 30th of September 2021. It's uh, supported by the uh, Michael Prochor Foundation and the Krasnoyarsk region. The exhibition is also part of um, the Germany and Russia, which is a um, one year program with a wide range of uh, different events taking place all over Russia. Uh, dealing with German culture, language, society, life in Germany, uh, organized by the German embassy in Moscow, the Goethe Institute, and the uh, Russian-German Chamber of Commerce. But uh, more interestingly, is more interesting is the exhibition itself. I'm sure for you. Um, so with us tonight we have uh, the curator, as I said, Thibaut de Reuter. Uh, uh, Berlin-based French-German curator and architect uh, who will be moderating tonight's event and who will uh, present to you not only the participants, but also say uh, a few words about uh, this exhibition that we're all very excited um, about opening soon uh, in a bit more than a month. Uh, Thibaut, the floor is yours. Um, good evening, or oh, hello. And... Yeah, so maybe I should uh, already, uh, maybe not apologize, but warn everybody that what we're going to do now is a, is a very new exercise and something that was uh, not uh, attempted yet, because we're going to speak about an exhibition that is not built. We're going to speak about artwork that are not uh, yet even produced. So we are really far uh, beyond before the, the, the coming of the exhibition. And I think it's going to be a very interesting moment because what we can share with the audience is really this, uh, the, the process or the in the making or all those things that happen before as a visitor, you enter a museum and you see an artwork and you just feel like the artworks are there, they exist, but you quite never know what happened before the existence. And that's a bit what we're going to share uh, with you tonight because the concept of the exhibition, and uh, I, I'm not going to now be discuss all the, the, the problems and the difficulties we had last year about traveling and, and about like moving uh, on Earth. But of course, the exhibition came out as, as a very challenging project, more or less how to do an international show, how to do an international Biennale uh, at a time where we can hardly travel. And not only we can travel, but also just sometimes simple transportation of goods becomes a problem. Uh, so when I started working on that show, came back to my mind a very important exhibition from 1971. So it's exactly 50 years ago, and we are kind of celebrating the birthday of an exhibition called Project P18, which happened in New York in 1971, where a curator asked 20 artists from New York to draw instructions so that the photographer, Harry Schunk, who uh, is quite known as an American photographer with, but was born in Germany by total coincidence. And the 20 artists wrote very simple short instructions so that Harry Schunk could 
produce and do photographs of a very beautiful place in New York called the Pier 18. And that exhibition is quite unique in the history of exhibitions. It was really a, a, an experiment or a project or a process. Uh, the 70s were also the big time of the conceptual art. And it came to my mind that maybe it would be interesting to try again 50 years later a similar approach and a similar project. So as a curator, what I did was to contact a bit more than 30 artists based in Berlin. I mean, based in Berlin because basically it's still a place where I can meet people on the street. I mean, our bars are closed, our offices are closed. We are all at lockdown at home, but by five degrees, you can still walk outside on the street and make some kind of studio visit or have some conversation with an artist. Not always the easiest way or maybe a bit of a Siberian uh, taste when you when you work with the artist and I asked those 30 artists to imagine art projects for the Museum Ploche Admira, art projects to be done and this time that's the big difference with the project P18, art projects to be done by the larger possible group of people from the city of Krasnoyarsk. I mean we are trying to do a biennial and I think if you do a biennial you really want to involve as much public as possible, as much as many people as possible. So some of the artists came with uh, projects that totally fit to kids' workshops or, or young people workshops. I think the museum is tomorrow organizing a, a workshop where people are going to do clothes in, in some kind of very uh, constructivist tradition. Some artists gave instructions that are a little bit more complicated and, and some artists also provided info instructions that are extremely difficult, uh, sometimes to understand, sometimes to produce, or, or sometimes just even to imagine. And this is the moment where this uh, project of Meet the Artist was born, because what we're going to do tonight is uh, introduce you on one side uh, one of the Berlin artists, or one of the Berlin-based artists, Barbara Breitenfelder. Uh, I hope we're going to see also very briefly Anastasia Bezberschuk, which is the, the direct counterpart of the project. She is at the Museum Ploche Admira, the person who's now every day uh, getting new instructions, new crazy requests, new impossible requests, new complicated projects. And she's the one who finds now and organizing the, the, pro the production of those works. And tonight we're gonna have one of the produ producers with us, Vadim Luke. Uh, who's producing somehow, and we don't know exactly yet how, they're, they're, they're both uh, totally in the process and in the making now. Uh, they're, they're producing the artwork of Barbara Breitenfellner, which, if I understood right, has to do with dreams, has to do with uh, coolie flowers, has to do with lamps, has to do with cables, has to do with boats and, and war photographs. So it's a quite complex project. And uh, so we're going to all have the chance and the possibility now to see this, this in the doing moment or this, this process. And I really hope uh, that it will give people the will to, if possible, uh, come to Krasnoyarsk on, on June 17 for the, for the opening of the show. And maybe also what's important to say is that we're going to do this format of this Meet the Artists uh, another three times with three other artists, uh, Brendan Howell, Gloria Tsain, and uh, Maru Mushtrieva, all three also having very interesting projects. And so at the end, you will have the chance to get a glimpse on uh, four projects of the exhibition before the exhibition happens. Um, yeah, I think it's kind of an introduction. I hope I forgot nothing. And maybe now, uh, Barbara, I, I would like you to maybe first uh, introduce a bit your practice. I mean, I see that now you are in your studio, so it's very interesting to, to, to maybe see how you work and what you are usually working on. And then maybe if you could introduce us uh, what you propose to Krasnoyarsk. Ah, one last thing also, maybe the, 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 the rules of the games that were given to the artists were very simple. One to 10 A4 pages vertical, because we're going to also make a publication with those pages. And the artists had absolutely full freedom on what they do on those pages. It could be drawings, it could be texts, it could be images. Uh, it could be very simple or very detailed. Uh, the, the, I think that the whole 
selection of the 34 artists shows also an amazing diversity that you can find in the Berlin art scene. The exhibition will have painters, the exhibition will have sculptors, sound artists, and artists making installation. And I think now with installation, we're gonna hear uh, what Barbara can introduce us about her practice, maybe. Thank you. Yeah, maybe I will explain a little bit about the background of my work before uh, I'm speaking about the very specific project for Krasnoyarsk, which I'm currently developing with, uh, with Vadim. And we will show some, uh, some glimpses of it afterwards. But maybe just a few words on, on my global approach to, uh, to, to installation work. For the last, um, let's say about 20 years, I've been working with, uh, with my dream notes. Um, that means like the, 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 the dreams which I've been writing down. I started this already when I was a student um, at the Glasgow School of Art. And I was at the beginning very thrilled on the idea and the notion of space in my dreams. So I've been writing down kind of quite manically uh, the, the images which kind of I, I encountered uh, by the night. And then only a couple of years later, I realized that I'm dreaming a lot also about art, about exhibiting, about being an artist, about uh, producing artworks and um, this became a focus in my work so in the tradition of like many other artists and um, and writers like William Burroughs or Unika Zürn or Jim Shaw uh, who have been dealing with the topic of of the dreams I'm using my own protocol to create some often absurd very um, dense sometimes ironic representations of uh, of being an artist and um, and exhibiting maybe um, I could try to show a sample of um, of some previous works okay Let me see. Okay, this should now not show the zoom, but my website. This is weird. Yes. Now you see it. Okay. Absolutely. Sorry for the mess, um, different windows being open. Um, yeah, I'm showing you here um, an installation which I think might be quite iconic on the, on the principle of, uh, of what I've just explained before. So you see here, um, th this is really like the text of the dream and the text of the dream, I'm using it as work instruction and at the same time, it's, it's the, always says the title of the piece. So this double process of translating the dream into text and using the text as a work instruction to retranslate the dream into the space stays visible in the, in the whole process. And here, the dream note was rather short and, and very laconic. It said, oh, I was writing down uh, from my nightly vision dream of an installation of a dog and various inclined surfaces. I was looking through a glass pane into a room, brown, pink wallpaper and carpet, a strangely illuminated cube, which I saw as a photograph. Then we left the empty house. And here, as very often in dreams, there's those kind of switches, you know, I mean, there's something, some description, and there's some pink and brown carpet, and then in the end, there's the empty house, and we are leaving, and, um, and there's the photograph, there's the, there is the, the glass pane, the cube, and so on. So what I did um, when I was exhibiting, exhibiting this piece in the museum in Frankfurt, a museum of angewandte Kunst, which means the Museum of Applied Art, I was... Um, trying to analyze all the different elements of the dream. And the most puzzled, obviously, I was about the, the dog. I was like, okay, dog in, 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 in an exhibition. And 
in addition with the inclined surfaces, I found this very, very intriguing. So I went to the museum and I asked them to have a look in their in their archive. Or I went into their archive, into the basement, and I saw, and I asked them to show me all sorts of dogs. So, so they came and said, "Okay, we have a dog here, which is a which is a which is a teapot, and there's another dog which is which is which is a, a stand to put umbrellas in, and here we have a, a sculpture uh, from from the um, from the 18th century from from Meissen, from the porcelain factory." Um, and this was the the element which stopped me instantaneously. And you see it here in the picture. I borrowed it from the collection and I used it as the as the core piece of my of my installation. Um, the dog, obviously, in my piece, normally it's it's a white sculpture. Um, through putting it in this um, very pink plexiglass box, it becomes. Um, this uh, this kind of very kind of pop, uh, almost kind of Jeff, Jeff Koonish uh, creature. And here you see how I've been dealing with the space. So I use this uh, this very strange corner in the in the architecture of, of Richard Meyer within the building. And I created a screen with the glass uh, uh, panels, uh, which just looked like as if they were just been delivered and uh, still there to uh, to be to be placed somewhere it uh, and then the carpet the pink carpet kind of crawls up the floor and reaches actually into another level which is above and then in the middle of the piece you have the pink box with the object illuminated from underneath and the last screen of the installation is a huge wallpaper you only see it partly here which sticks out, as I said, on the other floor, kind of pops out on another level where you have a completely different show and you have this kind of pink corner uh, and the dog whose eyes are multiplied through a kaleidoscopic lens. So you have this kind of multi multiple, multiple gaze uh, and multiple mouths of the dog. Here you see a little bit how I've been dealing with the space and the and the screen kind of opening and blocking, and through the creation of various reflections, it kind of invites the visitors to go into the space, but also uh, draws back the the image on the visitor himself. You see here some some scenes at the opening uh, with the various reflections, obviously in the happening in the in the glass. Yeah, so this is this is kind of I think this might be some some kind of very very one of the very typical uh, installations, because uh, when I when I work with the with the dream notes, there's always um, obviously the question of the the of the production, and this will also lead us to to the project to Krasnoyarsk because. It's there's a very different situation. Sometimes uh, museums in, invites you and gives you like a huge uh, budget. Like in, in in Frankfurt, it was it was produced by the Photography Festival Ray, and um, was shown within this kind of larger setting. And then sometimes there's also situations where. Um, it's just like a fun project to, you know, artists run spaces uh, as we have so many in Berlin and uh, it's people you know and they say, well, we don't really have a budget, but we have an amazing space which is on top of a supermarket and uh, and why don't you kind of make something come up with something just, uh, just for the weekend and that's uh, very different um, ways of dealing with uh, with this um, this idea of uh, of transforming a, a dream into into a space regarding the the available space and of course the whole setting which uh, which goes around it. Do we see the project on top of the supermarket? <laughs> sure. Um, of course. That was a really funny one. And also the dream is a very funny one. I was really hesitant because I thought like, oh my God, this dream is so ridiculous. Your career is gonna be finished. It says dream of an exhibition. And I really dreamt it like that. Dream of an exhibition, of a big exhibition, not just of an exhibition, of a big exhibition. And I had a huge and rather silly drawing of a clown. And I was very ashamed two girls performed on roller skates. That wasn't good either. So this was my dream. And I had like so much fun 
to perform it because it has all this kind of um, all those topics of um, of being an artist. Of course, you have a very big exhibition. Wow, great chance of your life. And what are, what do you do? You show something like super ridiculous. You show a rather silly and very huge drawing of a clown, and you're very ashamed. And then you have this ridiculous performance that wasn't even very good either. And I had so much fun. I mean, obviously, and here maybe it also makes clear that the dream text as the title of the piece is something very essential because in this exhibition, you had people, you see, you have like a huge audience. People are entering, they're having their drinks, they're having their chat. And um, obviously there's a very different um, understanding of the piece. If you have read the title of the piece in the invitation, which gives this kind of um, double information that this is a dream which is kind of on a, on another kind of meta level showing you uh, a failed exhibition somehow or if you just arrive and say like what's the crap I mean and this really was was the case because you had the huge drawing of the of, of the clown here you see it on the wall. The wall was painted pink. You have a, a mirror ball, which is kind of turning around. And of course, it kind of makes the whole space into this kind of disco, kind of glamorous with kind of the lights flickering and kind of going round and round. And um, and then I worked, I had worked with two um, professional dancers. Uh, I mean, really great dancers. They instantaneously understood the piece that they were acting in a dream space they one of them just came from new york where she had been dancing for Merce cunningham and the other one was a dancer who was like a roller skating queen uh, at the same time luckily and uh, my instruction to them obviously was to at the same time occupy the space relate to this clown figure but also to, to stay in this very closed um, universe. And this is why they were wearing headphones and sunglasses to be kind of totally shut off from, from the rest of the, of the audience. They were not performing for them, but they were making their own thing in the, in the dream. And also there were some elements of, uh, of total uh, dislocation of the whole setting because twice during this evening where people are like, you know, like an opening, they had fun, they were having drinks, they were outside on the, on the, on the big terrace with this view or behind the supermarket. This was like Berlin 2008. There were like kind of some huge view on, the, on some uh, derelict uh, slaughterhouses. Um, and uh, and um, this was the setting. So people were in and out and kind of checking the space. And then the music started in the in the space. And what the audience heard through the speakers was something totally different in style and also in rhythm and speed from what the two dancers had on their headphones. So their performance in the space on roller skates totally fell apart. Their movement totally fell apart with the music which we heard in the space. And for me, this kind of very little dislocation of this aspect of, of reality defined, and you see the, 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 the audience, they, they're puzzled, they, they don't even, you know, uh, they don't even dare to, to, to interfere, to kind of go deeply in the space. They really were very puzzled and kind of directed, uh, puzzled and kind of respected this, um, this, this own space of the, of the dancers. Here you see them again, you know, doing what I explained, like doing their thing, being in, their, in, in this kind of enclosed world of, of the dream somehow. Did you do that drawing? No, the drawing was was made by by an assistant. Well, I had somebody. She was an art student, and she approached me that she wanted to make um to uh, to, to gain some practical experience. Uh, so she was uh, she was coming to my studio and uh, stayed in Berlin for for a couple of months. Uh, and she was a brilliant drawer. So I asked her to 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 draw the piece. But um, as you see here, 
I mean, the way it's drawn is very kind of scholarly with this kind of grid. And then she, she, she drew it with this, um, with this um, kind of oily uh, crayon. So it had this feeling of like well-made, but like badly made at the same time. And this is just a, a Google image, which, uh, which we found like putting like, you know, clowns. And this one, I've, we found it particularly creepy somehow with the, you know, the nose, the little yellow teeth and this kind of um, seductive or repulsive uh, which, which, uh, uh, impression which, which clowns can have, obviously. Thank you. Um, maybe one tiny question and, and, and we should not be so detailed, I think. Mm -hmm. um, just a tiny question. Do, when you have those texts, do you have an image in mind already? I mean, do you remember your dreams and you really just like create or what's, what's happening exactly between the, the text and the space? Well, sometimes there, there, are, there are kind of snippets of, uh, of memories, but very often also, I mean, some people, I mean, people remember dreams differently, but uh, I'm, for me, the dream when it's written down and a couple of days later, a couple of weeks later, a couple of years later, sometimes the dream image itself, this kind of uh, thing that happens in your head um, has, has been lost actually. So I'm using my own text very often as if it was somebody else's. And maybe that's also interesting for the project I'm I have uh, studied for for Krasnoyarsk because there is some kind of alienation to my towards my own text, and I'm taking the the the, the different uh, elements and I'm kind of analyzing them and I'm shaking them and I'm reflecting the different objects and I'm finding an equivalent uh, uh, for them, which is obviously totally far away from the dream image itself. Sometimes I would love to re really see it, but obviously it's, impo it's impossible just to compare uh, what was the original source and what has uh, been made out of it. So can we see your project for Krasnoyarsk? No. Or is that a top secret story? Uh, no, not at all. That thing is already working. Yeah, but Vadim it looks like Okay, so here is the project for Krasnoyarsk. I mean, here you see, here, here you see the pages from my dream diary, and this is really how how they were written down. You know, in einem chaotischen Dunkel mit vielen Geschehnissen und parallelen Welten, eine Bildwelt, and so on. So um, maybe this uh, this page is a more interesting one because you see here what's how the, what's the text then of the dream Krasnoyarsk? Can we exactly see? here? Well. Here you have the the text, which is very very um, rich and uh, and very dense um, dream. It says in a chaotic darkness, with several occurrences and parallel worlds, a world of visuals war photos and brutal events from the press and recollections, e.g. of sailors on dark, dark stormy nights with breaking or bursting masts. And then a, a switch like so often in a dream kind of cut and kind of new image, a path in the dark, which is illuminated by cauliflowers we wash our hands in cauliflower. Someone makes sculptures from it. So I mean, here you see like the 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 the, the, the density of the of the text. And for the project, um, I was overwhelmed, obviously myself, from the density. And what I started to do was to check the different um, words like darkness parallel worlds, cauliflower, which seems to be like the central piece of the, 
of the of the dream cauliflower i mean the most common vegetable and i was happy that it's even the most common vegetable even in krasnoyarsk people are growing it on the dacha i was told which is obviously something i i, I love um i was obviously reflecting on this um on this vegetable but then it kind of melts and mingles with all this kind of very uh very kind of almost abstract um things like the chaos the darkness the, the 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 illumination and so on so what i did um as to start re, i mean to start what the the process with krasnoyarsk and uh, tibo you explained the 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 the, the project before uh, regarding the the harry shank project in in new york is that my own dream for for once and i think this is the first time this is why i'm so excited to work with vadim luke on the realization on it that i'm i'm kind of giving it out of my hands usually i'm realizing it myself but here i'm 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 presenting it to somebody else and i'm giving like clues like what could be the cows what could be the war photos and i have a quote of susan sontag here and what's the illumination and what's the dream itself which is a parallel world uh, and I'm kind of giving um, my own ideas and reflections on it. And at the same time, I'm kind of giving it out of my hands and this becomes like almost like a, a common reflection and a, and a collaboration <coughs> on, the, on the idea. And then also as a step, another step was to, to see um, if the museum had like imagery of the dream in the collection like they found i mean nastya she found amazing like paintings of ships and like model ships in the basement and uh, war photos and uh, so here i've just been like making like a pop-up screen with imagery like the cauliflower the, the fractale mm. which is a kind of a reflection on the cauliflower like the small scale scale which becomes the big scale the big scale which has itself as a small scale kind of multiplied to create the shame the shape or the washing of the hands in the cauliflower which is actually quite an absurd metaphor so but what what we see now on the screen is exactly low. so how many pages did you did you create four pages no Four pages, yes. So four A4 pages, which contain first the, the dream text, as yes. we've seen, then some kind of directions or, or possible like notes on the dream text, and then some mm -hmm. images you found on the internet, which of course are not images to be found in the museum. Obviously, they are just like, I so, mean, how do you say, like sim symbolic images. Mm -hmm. So now what interests me, and I, and I would like to hear Anastasia now. Uh, so you got that project, or you got those four pages in, in Krasnoyarsk. And as, as the kind of counterpart, as the, as the people in the museum, uh, what was your reaction? And what did you thought? And how did you approach then those four pages? And how did you imagine? So my first reaction was, of course, what I'm going to do with it. Uh, and uh, what was the most surprising, next, uh, our job uh, was uh, as if those instructions were written for some particular people in Krasnoyarsk. Those were the people who are interested in such topics uh, uh, that Barbara presented, or the people who already create such objects and projects. And I could see, I could see similar approach uh, to these artworks. And as for Barbara's instructions, it took me some time indeed to think who could be that person to produce uh, her artwork, not just in terms of taking it and uh, 
implementing this instruction into life, but uh, it uh, should be useful for the person, uh, him or herself, and in the process of communication with the artist, uh, he or she would learn something new, and maybe we'll have a fresh and new look at uh, some objects. So then the, the, the first uh, important moment for you was really to, who, who, is, who can be producing such, such a story somehow, no? That was really what you had, who you had to find or a person you had to find. So maybe you should tell us, uh, how did you find Vadim and who is Vadim? Um, uh, yes, uh, firstly, I thought about Vadim, but as far as I knew he, about his uh, works, uh, not that deeply. I saw him several times at the exhibitions. I had seen him and what Vadim does uh, at our diverse meetings with artists and events. Uh, this is what I knew. And after that, I started to ask my colleague from the museum uh, uh, and our colleague Curls herself, a char of young artists uh, of Krasnoyarsk, and I described her the idea, and she said, "Oh." We, this is Vadim we are talking about. This is Vadim Luke, exactly. And then I talked to another colleague of mine. She is an art expert, and I described her the idea. And she also said, exactly, this is Vadim we are talking about. And after that, that at least three persons directed to Vadim Luke, I have to grab him, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> so, Vadim. Who, who, who are you and, and, and can you tell us a bit what kind of uh, artist from Krasnoyarsk you are? Hello. I'm an artist. Uh, without, I would say I'm an artist not with a brush. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, what I do, I practice different uh, practices, as we say, but uh, indeed it doesn't matter for me uh, if I paint or I create music or I create some texts or uh, uh, my work, if my work is presented in a dance. Uh, yes, so, I have some core a creative core that is constantly moving and it can be represented in anything. And so, actually I have been painting since my uh, birth. And so, uh, I started from the streets, yeah, to make the long story short, graffiti, our first uh, steps in Krasnoyar startups when we worked in the streets then i got into promotion music parties um, development of some uh, technologies um, in 2010s i got back to paintings uh, and uh, through this time, I worked with graphic design. And uh, to add uh, another short story, what occupies me right now, I do not be able, I'm afraid to make it shorter, but uh, I will try uh, some. Uh, with Barbara, why uh, we got this immediate connection uh, with Barbara? Um, because uh, this uh, topic of dreams is very close to me. And I actually jealous uh, because Barbara can write her dreams. Uh, I uh, see dreams that cannot be uh, fixed on paper, maybe some fragments, yes, uh, but uh, mostly it's a kind of abstraction that flows out of me without logic. It's not about logic. It's not about speech. You cannot just translate it into speech logic and uh, sometimes I understand that I understood everything in my dream but so uh, when I wake up I cannot uh, even explain approximately what I saw so you see this is from abstract uh, from uh, some um, interborder uh, stuff this is what I study and this is where I naturally exist should I mention anything else no no absolutely I mean um, 
I, I think what interests me now, or the, or the question is like, so, so you got that text and those few images, this very, like those, those screenshots or those images from the internet. And, and what was your, your reaction when you read the text? Uh, did, you, did you have images popping up in your mind? Or what, what's your, what were your thoughts just when you, you read the text the first time? Uh, that's, uh, it's just classical stuff uh, that our subconscious offers us all the time or how to say this so these mechanisms of creating dreams for people are different for everybody and individual and sometimes it's just a mixture or combination of very tiny fragments of information started with uh, the day that has just passed uh, and finishing with very very deeply seated information that goes into some images chaotic images but definitely there is a connection and link that is very difficult to track uh, so it's this super mixture super complication will be presented in this project uh, and uh, actually what i draw what i paint this is exactly what i'm talking about a lot of many interrelated interconnected details and element elements actually like in our lives a lot of links a lot of connections are interlinked and mixed uh, but we don't notice and don't focus on it on the everyday basis so when i saw and read the text from barbara for the first time uh, i actually uh, can say that i saw a dream and uh, barbara managed actually to connect uh this idea if you read this text without knowing that it's a dream you can say what or you can think what but when you know that it's a dream that uh, the master of the dream managed to fix on paper then you understand what it is and then when i read uh, the text uh, i could see how one thing in a dream flows into another and uh, then into yet another so i i could see that barbara also see abstract dreams uh, this is the first thought uh, that came to my mind uh, and uh, another thought was that uh, it, it's my it, it's my person, Barbara. It's my person. You found you found a, soul, a dream mate, not a soulmate, but a dream mate. Yeah, totally. I mean, the first time we spoke, we had a <clears throat> we really like spoke more. exactly, Tibo. Yeah. Uh, so this is what uh, you say. This is how I feel. And so. I mean, I know that you are a little bit communicating with each other and that's kind of also not the, the, the game of the exhibition or the rules of the games here. We, we changed a little bit the rules because, of course, uh, otherwise the, the, the poor Anastasia will have just had that dream and will not, never been able to kind of imagine the whole process. So I know that now uh, Vadim and Baba, you are a bit uh, communicating with each other. Uh, but maybe because the exhibition is uh, already opening in five weeks or six weeks, so it's very soon now. Uh, and I think, Vadim, you, I, I see you working already you in your studio. Can we, can we maybe have an idea of what's happening for this exhibition? Can you show us something maybe? Or can, you, can, you, can, can we get some, 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 some gossips or some scoop or some fresh news? <laughs> Gossips. No, in the studio, you mean where I work? Yeah, no, I mean, of course. I, 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 I mean that, no, I, I think you already started to work on the piece, no? So maybe there are some things to be seen and maybe we could have a, a glimpse now on, on some, on what's happening in your studio around that story. That would be no. studio. Of course, of course, uh, I can uh, just briefly, I will uh, r run you through <laughs> our work. So, uh, what the project will 
B. Uh, so after we talked uh, with Barbara, it will we decided that it will be an installation uh, that will uh, have a lot of details, uh, like in her dreams. Uh, the main visual moments from the instruction from the dream of Barbara, uh, we. Uh, will implement, we will realize, uh, and from my side, I offered uh, that uh, we are not going just to interpret her dream or to provide some thoughts out of this dream. We will do some extra work. We will go into the structure of the dream. So I asked myself this question, and, uh, if we're looking at the dreams as kind of films, so there is, should, should be something behind it. And, and really we're looking at, at, at the kind of equipment table and the, um, and the equipment and different kind of data with different kind of um, dials and cables and buttons showing us what is going on. And that's a dream which is being displayed in front of us. So, so we're seeing a kind of a picture and what is behind it. Of course, we don't know. We don't even suspect what there is. So I was trying to sort of uh, think about that. I was thinking about uh, different possible interpretations of that. And it's a very interesting question. The connections between things which we see and which we can't see at all. And dreams can teach us how to transfer that kind of reality and uh, the things which are not connected between themselves. And there's all this perpetual movement, perpetual um, development. We can feel these kind of waves in dreams much deeper. And one, all those transitions of different qualities, we see a lot of things which uh, remain potential which have never been revealed or in, incarnated in any way. So we see some kind of information floating in, and it comes to us in this or another shape. So working um, in this, we're working with cows, we're working with all those links. And I've been trying to feed uh, so the, this installation and Barbara uh, looks at into cauliflower and uh, she focuses on cauliflower because cauliflower is a is a kind of a f fractal structure. If it's it's uh, it, it looks like it repeats itself, and that Mandelbrot set, of course, is the key shape behind cauliflower. So we have some very important archetypes and. Um, Parts of world construction where you can understand different things, different fundamentals, where you have mathematics um, interweaving with the language, and but also with a purely artistic elements, artistic um, consciousness. We are looking at that from our viewpoint, and we see more than we could have been seen, could have seen it being purely mathematical. You know, through the mathematical lens or through artistic lens. Uh, so uh, also another thing which we're also uh, analyzing all these different elements, uh, the way they overlap, and then when they... So we, we don't use just words, and uh, of course we can't use only verbal forms, so we can express the, that sort of um, overlapping meaning through objects, through art objects, artifacts, and different details as well. So our installation is going to be uh, going to, uh, will have a fractal shape, will contain one large piece, which contains much more smaller elements, which are sub objects and which are sub um, sort of forms, so cables and connections. Um, being used as well, and this is a kind of direct metaphor. So you can see here, so this chaos, cha chaotic, chaotic interconnectivity, and to uh, use the, that uh, kind of brain cell surgery term, 
and we also uh, have but, this but idea. Will there be a Cody flower in the museum? Made or? I don't know. I mean, I, think, I mean, we will. We, we Anastasia have to take care of bringing new cauliflower every second day. What about the cauliflower? Ну что же, смотрите. Oh, let's have a look. Wow. This is something I have started experimenting. So, so I have brought some parts of the material. So we have cables, we have different kind of shapes here. So the, all these um, uh, screwdrivers have indicators. Uh, and so if, when we touch a cable with, uh, with electricity, it, it will light up. So I have started assembling all those things, different kind of variations on the so I, I haven't got, uh, uh, I've, I've just dyed some of these pieces to see how, how uh, paint works on those shapes, what kind of sculptures can be made of it, how can they be separated. So all these things come together here. So we're going to combine all these things with with different objects, with different kinds of ornamentation, pictures, photos, and everything else. Because uh, our consciousness and subconsciousness um, is sort of is packed full with all this imagery. And uh, we, if we want to, to be seen and understood in the context, there should be context. Wow, amazing. Um, so, in, in a few weeks, what was on your table will uh, arrive in the museum. I'm looking at the time now, so we've been 15 minutes. So yes, in, in a few weeks, uh, what we've seen on, on news we did, yes, will be in the museum. Uh, I, I hope that uh, also Barbara, you were happy with what you've seen on that table. It's amazing. I love it. I mean, we were speaking yeah, with the backwards, yeah. of course. But here, I mean, this, this is a very new process of this, uh, of those sculptural things. Uh, Vadimi sent me this, uh, this photo earlier today. It's great. I mean, I also love this, this, um, this laboratory character of, of, of the whole table. And, uh, and it could be, I mean, obviously there will be a lot of elements come, be coming out of this, like uh, sculpted cauliflowers, like experiments with like building foam and kind of other materials. But at the same time, I love this um, setup of this uh, experimentation itself because the, the the it looks like a like this dream laboratory, like kind of half scientific and kind of half kind of um, inventive, and um, I, I I love it. It looks great. Also, the the idea of the cabling and so on. It's uh, it's so. Ex I mean, for me, it's super exciting and, and 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 new to see what is what is happening now in Vadim's head and in Vadim's studio. Mm. Um, I, I think that Pierre is still with us. I think that also Olga from from Gurten is with us. Uh, there's also a, a live chat now running on uh, YouTube. So maybe we could open quickly the floor and maybe some of the participants here have some uh, potential questions. Maybe some people want to hear more or understand better what's happening. Or even maybe Anastasia, maybe you have a question also. I don't know. Any question? Yes, with great pleasure. I'd like to make some comments. First of all, I envy Barbara and Vadim, because uh, apart from the fact that people like uh, telling about their dreams and sharing what they have dreamed about, then artists, of course, have very interesting opportunity, not just to talk about their dreams, but also invite other people to visit these dreams in a kind of a recreated object installation and to sub get submerged into what they've seen. So I really liked um, Barbara's works, uh, the ones which I saw at her website, 
the installation collages and I've uh, noticed that very often you have uh, animals as kind of recurrent topic. And um, I just wonder uh, why animals, what's the history behind that? Uh, how often do you dream of animals? Uh, maybe you have certain interpretations of those animals. And the second question is, does it happen to you that one and the same dream comes back to you? And if yes, then what's your explanation of that kind of returning dream? Well, that's some interesting questions about the about the animals. I mean, I'm 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 puzzled that you're asking this because the the the, the dream we are working on here is one without animals. <laughs> the the, the you call the cauliflower an animal, some kind of creature, also kind of some living creature uh, the, the, as as the plant. Yes, you're right. Um, the animals they 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 do play a role, but um, not not in all the dreams. You have the you you have the dog. You have uh, also in in some of the dreams you have like iconic um, figures from from the art world. Like one of the dream um, had uh, had the had the artist Joseph Boyce uh, performing um with the gorilla here comes again the animals uh in a very, very kind of funny kind of absurd setting that uh, that that turned out to be a circus so i've been melting like those uh, those two those two figures into one um the animal uh, i think the, the the our relation to the animal is such a complex and philosophical uh, topic um which uh, could uh, take a whole day to uh, to to explore it. Uh, how come that we separate ourselves even from the animal kingdom uh, as we are only animals ourselves? I mean, and uh, I think the way we deal with the animal has to do a lot with uh, with projection. And I'm interested in this um, idea of the projection that happens on very different um, levels. One is um, the zoo, the, 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 the exhibiting um, of the animal, like, uh, like uh, the, the exhibiting of the, of, the, of the live animal, which is of course uh, a captured and, uh, and, um, and therefore uh, tortured uh, one. And uh, at the same time, the, the, the idea of the, of the taming which uh, occurs in, of course, uh, all the things, which is uh, the, the pet, you know, like the cat and the dog and so on. Anyway, I mean, we're, we're short of time and uh, I think this is it's, it's a huge topic and, um, and a very complex one. Um, I forgot the second question. Can you remind me? Sorry, I was excited about the animals. The second question was, do you have a recurrence dream which comes back to you? Sure, of course. The recurrent dreams are, are, very, are very thrilling in general. I have had that uh, since I can remember, even as a, as a child, um, that uh, dreams kept coming back uh, in variations, sometimes similar, but sometimes in variations. And um, sometimes even, uh, I mean, I've been obviously researching a lot into this, uh, into this dream to topic, um, uh, all this kind of idea of the lucid dreaming where you can even uh, be a part of your dream and uh, conscious, I mean, with, uh, with your own consciousness, uh, you even can kind of direct and shape the dream. Um, the, the the dreams that are that are coming back uh, also applies to the to the dreams of exhibitions it's even sometimes when i realized a dream into space it it returns uh, a certain time later in 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 a, in a totally different and distorted context and and uh, this happened a few times and i have uh, i have always planned to make like this kind of follow up kind of uh, uh, distorted uh, version of the of the same idea i haven't done it yet but it's a it's a, it's a very thrilling um thing but can you give us an example of uh, those recurring dreams i mean it's mostly dumb um, it's mostly yes painting. like for example the clown from the um 
from this uh, performance with the with the roller skates with the performance on roller skates this uh, kept coming back in another dream and the, the the clown was merely reduced to an image which was photocopied like and enlarged and filled a huge space as kind of photocopies glued on the wall kind of provisionally but at the same time there was a total collapse and a shift in the in the um, in the scale and the whole space, which was this huge kind of blown out photocopies, was just a model of the space. And um, the other example is, the, is that dream which I mentioned earlier on, um, on Joseph Boyce performing with the gorilla. Um, in a follow-up dream, the performance of Joseph Boyce was happening kind of only in the margin. And I myself was in the space and I was mopping the floor. I was cleaning the floor with a, with, with, with a mop. And the head of another installation of Joseph Boys from the tram station, this kind of uh, sculpted head, was attached to a wardrobe. And the wardrobe was on some kind of um, moving vehicle, like a trolley, which was moving through the space while I was mopping the floor. Very curious kind of situation. It's interesting because now we have two questions from the, from the audience. And, and uh, one of the two questions, so I, I'm reading it. And, and while reading it, I'm maybe also going to improve it. So somebody is asking if, if you use brain stimulators or specific food to, to enhance and make your dreams more spectacular, which I also think probably means like, do you take drugs, uh, Baba, or are your dreams like natural and bio, like all the Germans like it, you know, it should be bio dreams. So how, how, how yeah, do, do you use anything to dream differently? No, not at all. I'm I'm as clean as somebody can be clean apart from my little glass of wine sometimes. No, no, honestly, um, no. Uh, I don't think you have you need to take drugs to 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 have dreams. I mean, dreams are are com are common to everybody to 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 humankind. I mean, dreams uh, are dating back to to uh, to kind of ancient cultures and. Uh, and the the, 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 the the fact of dreaming, which I am also uh, very interested in um, on a on a on a medical level, uh, you know what's 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 happening in your in your in your brain structure during the dreams, um, and uh, what are the, the the remains of the of the of the everyday, which are which are getting kind of messed up and 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 mingled up is. Uh, is, is a field of research. At the same time, I'm, I'm trying to avoid um, uh, rather um, those, I mean, I've, I've been reading on things and also the, how you can induce kind of this kind of lucid dreaming, but uh, I, 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 I stayed away from this. I was afraid that it uh, that the that the that the project was losing some 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 innocence, if you can say it, uh, that it was too con there was it was getting too contrived. And, and too staged. And so now just going to be the last question, which of course uh, brings us back a bit to the, to the birth of that whole exhibition project. And, and somebody would like to know, of course, uh, how much the actual situation and, and this uh, lockdown and the, the kind of like uh, problems that we all know, if that has an influence on your dreams. So maybe here the question is not so much uh, if you take drugs to have different dreams, but also if your daily life has an influence on your dreams, and and what could you say about that? Yes, of course, of course. I mean, violently, I think we are dreaming of um, of the life which we are longing for. I mean, the whole um, <clears throat> the whole situation of. Um, of meeting people, but I'm 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 one hundred percent sure this is not only myself that we all dream about those situations where we are finally able again to meet other people in a kind of uh, in an easy way, and we're going to 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 a party to see friends and so on. And then within the dream, we all of a sudden have this kind of a switch of like, oh my god, people are too close, and this is not possible. Like, 
uh, there's the same reaction which we have sometimes nowadays when we watch a movie and people are hugging and you're like, oh, it's this kind of a moment of fright. Um, yes, obviously um, the the situation we are going through for the last year is is is, is also uh, reflected in in my dreams, but um, at the same time. Um, my artistic research on the dreams is still focused on the dreams on art in the larger sense. Um, and uh, I have been asked and have been obviously also invited uh, to exhibitions which are having the topic of the pandemic and the um, and the idea behind it and what it does with our kind of uh, emotional and practical kind of everyday life. Um, um, yes, I'm, but I'm still trying to, to, to focus on the, to not focus on the, on the, on, on the pandemic at the moment in my, in my art world. Also as a, as a matter of, of, of sanity, because if, when I'm going to my studio and I'm working here uh, by myself, it's also the moment to focus on the work and to forget momentarily on the on the on the whole situation which is which is happening around us at the moment. So um, thank you. It's been a little bit more than one hour now, so I don't know if Pear wants to to close that. Uh, Tiny story. I don't see any questions left, and my pair is gone. So I'm gonna make the the, the, the closing speech. Uh, there will be, as I said in the beginning, three more uh, meet the artists that will also occur on Wednesday again uh, in the middle of the afternoon or in the early afternoon in Berlin and on the the late uh, or in the early evening in Krasnoyarsk. So next week, uh, we can meet each other again with another artist, another project, and another story. Uh, I, I would like now really to thank everybody who's been here uh, on, on, the, on the panel, also the, the translators that were behind us, the technicians that made this uh, thing look very beautiful. And uh, yeah, I think now, just put in your calendar, June 17th, there will be some coolie flower in the Museum Plochat Mira in Krasnoyarsk. Thank you. Okay. okay Thanks okay. a lot, everyone. It was a huge pleasure speaking. Thanks, Vadim. Thanks, Nastya. Thanks, Thibault. <laughs>